What's up, everyone? My name is Matthew Dale. I am here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more. And lately, I've been getting a lot of comments on my YouTube videos about um, confusion with setting up the Axe FX3, the FM3, and the FM9 as an audio interface for recording in a studio or a home studio. So that's what we are going to demystify in this video today. Now, a couple of bookkeeping things before we get started. My DAW of choice is Studio One. That's what you see called up here right now. Um, but these same principles will work if you are using Logic or Pro Tools or Reaper or yada, yada, yada. All digital audio workstations um, do most of the same things. They just probably do that a little bit differently. So all of the principles that I teach you today in this lesson um, are going to be transferable on your own DAW. You just may have to search for where to adjust those particular settings. Also, let's take a look at what I've got going on. Right now I'm on the FM3. I'm gonna show you the FM3 workflow and then I'll show you the uh, workflow that would pertain to the Axe FX3 and the FM9, since those are very similar in this regard. Here is FM3 Edit. One thing just to clarify right now, FM3 Edit is not a plugin. <laughs> All it is doing is controlling hardware. So um, you're not gonna call this in like a plugin. You're, I have this actually open separately from Studio One. So let me go back and pull this up. Let me just show you what I got going on here. I am using an AC20 uh, along with some Dynacabs. I got a splash of reverb. And this is what my guitar tone sounds like right now. <laughs> Just something kind of like that, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of that sort of thing happening. Now let's get back over into my DAW and talk about proper setup, signal flow, and workflow. So first things first, I need to make sure that my audio device is the FM3 since I'm using that as my audio interface. So rather than using my main interface, which is my Studio Live 16, I'm gonna select the FM3. So I've got my FM3 set up as my audio interface. I am recording at 48K. We are ready to start a session and we'll just call this test. I know, real original. Again, sample rate at 48K. Let's go ahead and call in a blank song here. Once again, I am not going to be pulling the uh, FM3 from my list of um, digital instruments. It's not a digital instrument, it is a hardware instrument. What I am gonna do is start building a track or get a couple of tracks here. We'll actually see the routing, how this stuff is all routed here in a second, but I'm just gonna build one track, okay? We'll label it guitar and we can see the FM3 is a four by four audio interface, four ins, four outs. And although I've got routing up here for my Studio Live, which I can do 32 channels on, here are the labels for the four ins and outs using the FM3. The in one or the input one and input two are taking the audio signal from the output one block. So it's sourcing from the out one block, left and right. So left signal would be channel one, right signal would be channel two. So if you're recording stereo guitar tones, you're gonna want two tracks. So let's actually just go ahead and build another track here real quick. And we're gonna do this on input two, and I'm gonna go down here to my mixer and just make sure that these are hard panned, okay? So if I just go back into this again, we can see now in three is taking from the input block uh, left or input two left. And then in four is the input block uh, one right or input two right. So again, that is the block that is going on. I'm gonna use this to record a dry signal. So let's get one more and now I'm gonna call this dry. And we'll talk about why we would wanna use a dry signal as well. Let's source this from three. And then let's see what we got going on here. Right now I have no output set for the, uh, for the FM3 as my audio interface. So I'm gonna go to the output block one. So if I record enable these, I should start to see some signal and I do. We can see that dry signal is a little bit different. Let me pull back my FM3 edit here. So 
inputs one and two are grabbing from here. So this is all the processing that we are capturing. And then the dry signal is just capturing straight from the input block. And we're going to use this dry signal to do reamping. So typically what we want to do for um, a workflow using these devices is to capture a performance um, that we would already have like preset tones and then also capture a dry signal to reamp those tones. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Let's get a little bit of a recording first, both the dry signal and my process signal. Let me go ahead and hit record on this and we will make sure all my signals are up. And here we go. So a little bit of some guitar noises there. Let's go ahead and take a listen to what we have. I'm going to mute the dry and here's just what we recorded from the output block. Great. We have signal. We've got stuff going on. Let's go ahead and just listen to what our dry signal is. This is just my guitar going into the X or not the XFX, the FM3 right now. We'll get to the XFX in a second. So that is not something that I would want to include in a song. It's a terrible tone. It's just unprocessed. It's not, it's nothing. It's just, you know, the straight guitar signal from the pickups, basically. So now let's actually use this dry signal to do stuff. The, the thing about recording from input one and two is I can't go back and change my recorded sound on this yet, right? So if I pull up FM3 edit, if I make some adjustments here on my amp, they are not going to be reflected, unlike a plugin, right? This is not a plugin, although it looks like a plugin. And in fact, I've even had students that see me making adjustments in a lesson on the controller FM3 edit because it's a controller. It's controlling our devices. They'll ask me like, hey, can I download that program and get that? And yeah, you can download the program. It's not going to do anything because you don't have the hardware that it's controlling, but you can download it for free, I guess, if you wanted to. So it is not a plugin. I can't stress that enough because I've seen that in quite a number of comments. So what do we do to actually control and reamp and remix our guitar performance? The dry signal is just our straight guitar performance. How do we reamp it? This is what I would suggest. Now, I could go back to my main output here and go to the in block um, three. Uh, this is the output. It's going to be output three and output four. It goes directly to the input block. So I could do it that way. But actually, it's going to be a lot better to set to to set up a separate output in this case. So I'm going to go to my outputs here. And I'm going to go to my I.O. So now I'm going to build a new output. You can see in Studio One, I usually have a dedicated output to my click track, um, but I'm going to set up a fresh one here. So we're going to add a mono sub out. And I'm going to call this dry since it's where my dry signal is going to be going. And let's just have it go to output three. And let's apply that. I like it. And now we will see, here is my new output. Now over here on the routing, I'm going to not send my dry to the main, I'm gonna send it to my dry out. Now let's just take a little bit of a second to talk about the routing from the setup of the FM3 side of things. So if I go into my setup and we take a look at the audio config page, now we can see down here in this digital IO section, uh, we've got a SPDIF outsource. I'm not using SPDIF for recording, so we can ignore that right now. USB three and four record source is input one. USB one and two playback destination is going to output two. These are the output two jacks on my device. You're gonna wanna be, even though it would also be sending to the output one block, as we see over here, the actual signal is flowing to the output to jack on the device itself. So that's what I have plugged in uh, on the uh, on the FM3 here. And then the USB 3 and 4 playback destination is going into uh, input 1. That's coming from our dry signal. And then we have our buffer size, which we will just ignore for right now. And there's going to be one other thing to adjust here. Let me go back. 
And now we can see we're, our dry signal is moving into this new output, but it's not doing anything. One more thing to adjust on the setup window. If we go to audio, input one source is analog. So that's actually my physical guitar, right? When I play the guitar, it goes through my signal chain that I have established up here. I'm gonna want to, on the FM3, I'm gonna want to move this to USB, channels three and four. Now, as I play my performance, it's going into my FM3. So if I see this, this is just everything going through the FM3. That's the performance that I played. I can adjust. Maybe I want to add a preamp. Let's do, I don't know, TC08. Maybe I want to kill the dry or the the uh, reverb for a little more drier signal. Now, with that, let me go back here. I can adjust the guitar tone that I want. Now I'm going to have to to do the reamping is re-record that. I'm not actually going to play it. I'm just going to re-record with a different sound. So let's create two more tracks, and I'm just going to do this pretty quick. So this is going to be reamp. We'll call that reamp, and we will have it go to input one and two again. Here's reamp one and two. Let's record and enable this, and I can re-record our part. So now I have that different tone. I'm going to hard pan these since these are in stereo. Let's go ahead and mute the dry out, and then what we can do now is kind of listen, compare, and use whichever tone is the most, you know, necessary for whatever we are recording. Here's that dry and a little more crunch. Maybe I want to pull these down a little bit and include these in that track. or I just choose one over the other. That is how to record, capture a dry cell, and how to reamp in the FM3. Let's move over to the Axe FX3 uh, because the Axe FX3 and the FM9 are gonna be, gonna be a little bit different and actually a little bit more convenient, and you'll see why in a second. Now, real quick, before we get back to the lesson, if you want any of the tones that I am using in this lesson, then you should check out my blocks library. You can find this for free by just going to my website, matthewdale.com slash blocks, and you can download this for yourself. Okay, so now I've switched gears. I've swapped over to the Axe FX3, and we'll talk about how the Axe FX3 and the FM9 work with this sort of recording setup. So here's my preset. Here's just what I have. That preset with some lovely lush reverb and stuff going on. Let's go over to Studio One and let's get all of our ducks in a row. I'm not using the FM3 anymore. My audio device is going to be the Axe FX3. Now let's go ahead and take a look at song setup. This is also the audio routing, so I'm going to hit song setup. Axe FX3, the Axe FX3 and the FM9 are 8x8 audio interfaces, so 8 USB in and 8 USB out. On the input side of things, here's our routing. Channels one and two is gonna be the same thing as the FM3. It's our output one block, left and right. Uh, channels three and four are the output two block, left and right. Five and six are gonna be instrument in, um, so those are actually gonna be the same thing. And then seven and eight is gonna be uh, input two, left and right. On the output side of things, I'm still going to have a dry signal set up, and this time, I'm gonna set up my dry signal on channel seven. We'll see why here in a second. So I still have my mains going to output one and two. My dry signal, I am going to send to output seven. So let's go ahead and hit okay. We can see that reflected down here. There's my dry out and then just our main outs. Let's get some tracks again. I'm gonna pull in five tracks again like we had. Let's just name this third track dry, 
and then we'll have all these. I'm gonna just preemptively hard pan all of these guys. And we're gonna send our dry signal to that sub output, our dry output. So let's record some tracks. <laughs> reverb on that guy. And that's fine. I like reverb. Axe FX3 and the FM9 have a little bit of an edge for ease of use. If I pull in a new block, I'm going to go to input. And if I go to our input USB block, I'm just going to connect this up. And if we take a look at our routing, routing again over in studio one, we can see output seven is going to in U block left. And that's okay because we're just doing a mono signal right now. So this is the input USB that we saw over on Axe Edit. Input USB. So now if I have all of my ducks in a row, let's go ahead and mute out our first performance. We should get that dry signal being sent over USB into the USB block, as we saw here, and then going through my same signal. So if I hit play... And now I can make some adjustments, like go to a new scene. And then that's going to adjust my guitar tone. So let's just go back and let's re-record that. I don't need to do anything. I just need to hit record and Studio One will do the rest and the Axe Effects will do the rest. So I hope this clarified how a studio setup, how a recording setup would work with all three of these fractal devices. Leave me a comment in the space below if this was helpful. Once again, feel free to check out my blocks library. You can find it at matthewdale.com slash blocks if you want some tones like I was using in this video here. My name is Matthew Dale. I'm here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more, and I will see you in the next lesson.